We're back, y'all. Um, as I was saying, you know, we lost a lot of great legends um, coming into the new year, 2022, and coming into the new year. Um, I think it was a couple of days ago where we lost the legendary, legendary Anita Pointer um, from the Pointer Sisters. That was kind of a shock to me to, you know, see, you know, just to hear we lost Barbara Walters, Bob Saget, and just a host of just a lot of legendary people. So I just want to send my condolences out to all of the families who are suffering loss right now um, in these trying times. Um, I'm praying for you all. Um if it's help that you need, reach out. Um, like I said, I'm going to be posting a lot of helpful resource numbers for people that's dealing with grief um, this time of the year. And also, I want to send a shout out and love to my families of the missing and murder community as well. We have lost a lot um, we're dealing with a lot. Um, we're going to get into missing persons in the third segment of Black Rose Garden. I will be featuring three cases today um, that I actually just got this morning. And during the broadcast, we're going to be showing you some active cold cases in missing persons throughout the broadcast. So please continue to share, um, get the information out there. This is very important for the families. Um, we have a lot of cases. I have a lot of personal cases right now that's in the court processes right now. Um, Marty William McMillan Jr. case, um, the young man who was reported missing back in Washington, D.C. Um, it was April the 23rd, 2017. Um, he was found nine months later along Suitland Parkway and Forestville Road. His case um, is coming up. 41-year-old um, um, John McGee was arrested and charged with murder, with the murder of Marty William McMillan Jr. A lot of you all might not know his case, but um, he met a young woman on the website Plenty of Fish and he ended up in a very bad situation. Um, I have been working with his grandmother, Miss Felicia Cook, ever since this terrible um, tragedy happened. So we're going to um, keep you updated on the trial. Actually, the trial starts January the 31st. OK, I'm going to keep you all posted on the trial and I want you all to send the family some support. Um, also, we have the case of Akia Eggleston, um, the young woman, 25 at the time that was reported missing from the Cherry Hills um, section of Baltimore, Maryland. Um, this was back in 2018. May the 6th, to be exact, is when she was reported missing. Um, she was eight months pregnant at the time, all right? This is one of my personal cases. It's actually a case that was featured in the HBO documentary, Black and Missing, okay, which I was featured in episodes three and four. Um, these are cases, a lot of those cases that was featured in that documentary series are cases that are near and dear to my heart. So we're going to be talking about that and getting more into missing persons and sex I mean, sex trafficking education as well. Um, I'm working on two books right now, okay? Um, one of them will be a tip book, okay, for prevention when it comes to sex trafficking. It will have stats. It will have um, prevention measures. Um, I'm also going to be getting 
into the schools. You know, I'll be getting into the schools um, very soon. Okay, so I'm trying to get a curriculum together for um, my elementary school children, which I don't have right now, but I will be starting in the middle school and high school levels. Okay, so look forward to that coming when school starts back this fall. Okay. Um, we're going to get into it. All right. Um, also, um, I have changed the look of my flyers for this year. Um, I have my caseload is pretty big. Okay. And I have a lot of cases, as you all know, I have been centering, um, getting into, the cold cases of missing persons because we have a lot of them. As you all know, we closed the year out with over 600,000 reported cases, um, missing person cases, okay, in this country, all right? So um, the work is still, is still a lot of work that needs to be done with sharing these cases and getting the information out there. So I just appreciate, you know, my listening audience, TikTok, okay? I appreciate y'all sharing the missing person flyers and helping me help these families get this information out there. Okay, I'm going to take a quick break and I will be back with author G.L. Williams. Be back. Y'all, we are back. First of all, if you would like to make donations to Black Rose God and Missing and Murdered Podcast, please do so through Cash App at Black Rose 50, okay? All of the donations go towards flyer distribution because I do um, print up flyers for my families in the Missing and Murdered. I ship them all over the country. Sometimes flyers can be, well, not sometimes, but flyers are very expensive to, you know, print up. So I like to offer that for the families of my Missing and Murdered community. But right now, okay, 
I have in the studio author, okay, of Hobo Sexuals. <laughs> All right, Mr. G.L. Williams. I'm going to let you introduce yourself. And... Uh, uh, oh, my name is G.L. Williams. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, originally from Baltimore, Maryland. Okay. Uh, I've, I've left Baltimore when I was, I think, 18. Mm -hmm. Uh, lived in Los Angeles uh, and the and DC, sort of bi coastal for the last probably close to twenty five years. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Author. <laughs> I was strolling through Facebook, minding my business, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was so I was I was As strolling. We all do. Yeah, like we all do. We minding all do. my I was minding my black business. When I was strolling through Facebook and I ran into you. Ah. Yes, okay. Mr. G.L. Williams. <laughs> and what really caught my attention was the book, mm. Hobo Sexual. Um, mm. Sexual. Hobo, a Hobosexual You May Know. Is yes. It, yeah. Is what caught my attention. Ah. You know, we living in some times right now. Um, we're going through the pandemic. We're like a couple of years in it. And mm. people, these issues oh. with these relationships absolutely are just coming <laughs> out. Okay. <laughs> and when I saw that, because that, you know, that when I read, actually read the meaning of what you were trying to say, mm. I'm like, oh, my God, I just heard a story. Mm. <laughs> I just heard a story <laughs> from someone who is dealing with a situation and maybe they need to get it broken down to them. I get that. I get that every time. I get that wherever I go and uh, introduce the the book and the mm -hmm. idea behind the book. That's the first thing people say. I got a story for you. Wow. And it's actually the the stuck the st the book um compri comprises of um, uh, stories like that, individual stories, as well as uh, I, I talk about a lot of do's and don'ts to help you mm -hmm. avoid the situation. But um, it, it, in actuality, the, the stories which are true in the book uh, come from people that I have met over the years okay. who have told me these stories. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I get so that all the time. So this is real life stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can really tell with the the title. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's 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 um the when I I, I uh, the original concept behind the books uh, really started with me about about close to thirty years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, I always had a fascination for, uh, and I can and I'm speaking primarily about uh, men like me, okay. uh, which which is uh, uh, from my community, right? Mm -hmm. So. And what is your community? Black community. Okay. <laughs> Black community. Uh, and just to let the people out there yeah. in Black Rose Garden land know. Well, I, well it is important. Because you know how people, you have to really you do. Yeah. You do. And and I, I had to say that because you know one of the biggest questions that I get is it is it does it that type of lifestyle only occur in the Black community, which mm -hmm. is which is not true. It's far from. Uh, Far from uh, uh, reality, it, it it happens in every community. Okay. Um, the 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 term is used primarily in the black community, but it actually describes a lifestyle that takes place in every community, okay. including uh, not just heterosexual but the gay community as well. Mm -hmm. In fact, the first time I heard the term hobosexual, H O B O sexual was I was watching a YouTuber about three years ago and um, uh, he was doing a, he, he happened to be a gay guy and he was doing a video mm -hmm. uh, about that taking place in the gay community. Okay. And it reminded me of something that I used to always talk to my friends about, which was, um, uh, let me just say this, I've been married for uh, 23 years in, uh, in mm -hmm. April. Prior to being married, I always lived alone. I was right. single guy living alone. But uh, it was rare that I would meet other black men who lived alone. Right. And that, that always, you know, caused me to be curious about, about why. I would meet plenty of women that lived 
alone mm-hmm. and on their own and taking care of themselves. But it was rare mm-hmm. that I would meet a uh, a black man who lived alone. Right. So it made me start thinking about how does that is kind of you know that's not a that's not a rare situation. Yeah, it, yeah. it really isn't. Yeah, it, it's, when you think about it, right, and mm-hmm. it's something that we don't think about, right? right. Because you got to ask yourself. And and again, I'm, I'm speaking of our community. How does most? How do most men transition from uh, being at home with their, pretty much with their mother, um, uh, or family members, mm-hmm. uh, to living on their own? And right. the majority of the time, you'll find uh, they make that transition from home with family to living with a woman. Wow. And it's just not something we talk about, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I'm not saying that that's the case across the board. Mm-hmm. Of course, there's plenty of people like myself who... But I've had an experience like that. So yeah. I'm telling you, it. that's why it hits hard, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I, I joined the military at, at 18. And when I was assigned, uh, when I was... Um, I went down to Texas, Fort Hood, Texas. The first thing I did, uh, because I always wanted to have my own place, so it was the first thing I did. Mm-hmm. And I and the military gave me such a hard time because, and that's where the curiosity started, because they gave me such a hard time because it just wasn't something people, a single man would do. Right. Um, uh, that started the, the curiosity of why. Mm-hmm. And if, if it's not occurring that way, why isn't it? Right. occurring that way how right. are how are men like myself normally making the transition from at home with mom to living on their own right fast forward just three years ago when i saw uh the youtuber his name is uh walter lee hampton he was doing a uh, a video and he spoke about hobosexuals mm-hmm. he's talking about how there was this phenomenon going on where uh black men in his community which is the gay community mm-hmm. um where they would target other men, these are these are men who didn't have a place to stay. They were they were jobless and you know right. they were targeting men who had their own so that they could have a place to stay. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow. Because I know for a fact this takes place in the heterosexual yes, community as yes. well. And I started digging deeper and mm-hmm. deeper and deeper. And that's in three years ago is when when I really started um uh, writing the book then yeah and then just wow. yeah i started speaking to as many people as i could talk to uh, in particular women black women in particular mm-hmm. and uh i will tell you that it was difficult for me to find a black woman who had not had an experience like that where right. some guy was living with them uh who refused either refused to get a job or wouldn't or, or did or couldn't get a job Mm-hmm. And uh, he basically was living with them, pretending to love them mm-hmm. just so that he could have a place to stay. Well, yeah. and even sometimes in a situation where you can meet a guy that has a job, mm-hmm. you know, but maybe the credit is not good where they can get their own place. And you know why that is? Because as young, and I don't know about, about now, I'm, I'm, I'll am I'm be 53 years old in mm-hmm. April, so I'm old school. Um, when I was growing up, um, women were taught, or young girls, young young girls were taught how to care for themselves. Men were, were taught, like myself, were taught how to bring home a paycheck. Right. Not care for themselves. Not care for themselves. So when right. you're when you're producing men that way, they're going to even if they do like you said have a job mm-hmm. but not the credit. Yeah. They're going to be looking for that mother figure. Right. That person who is going to Ooh, pay the bills. Mm. And even for this, and, and, and even for those men who work hard every day because there's plenty of us who mm-hmm. do. Um they just don't have the ability. They weren't taught mm-hmm. how to live on their own. Right. My mother taught me that at a very young age. Mm-hmm. You know, just uh, you know, she never taught me how to uh, lean on anybody. So things like uh, credit, writing a check, right, um, things of that nature. I was taught that at a very young age. Mm-hmm. So, but I found that most men aren't they're taught not. that. No, no, they're not. And women learn that from watching their mothers. Mm-hmm. 
men watch their fathers bring home their paycheck. Right. So as they get older and they leave mom's home, quite naturally, the first thing they do, well, I got to find a woman who has her own place, has the credit to get a place for the both of us. Mm -hmm. I'll give her my paycheck while she takes care of mm -hmm. the bills. Yeah. The the idea of a hobosexual is 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 not that category. Right. Uh, it's the extreme. It's an individual who is targeting uh, because he, he doesn't have a job right. or doesn't have a place to stay. He's mm -hmm. actually targeting women who has those things so that he can have a place to stay. And he'll pretend to love her. You know, he'll have sex with her just so that he can maintain a place to live. And, and that's basically what the book is and, about. And that's basically what's going on right now. Absolutely. I've talked to many women. Mm-hmm. Um, throughout this pandemic, you know, I'm going to say like, I, you know, I basically talked about my relationship, you know, mm -hmm. coming out of a relationship mm -hmm. and, um, the healing process of mm -hmm. the whole thing, because I had to heal, right? you know, through, you know, when I got out of that relationship, right. so, but I had to realize what that thing was all about mm. because sometimes when we're we then we jump from one bad relationship mm -hmm. to another and we don't do no healing in the process right. of it right mm -hmm. i had to learn that the only way that i was going to be able to give someone else a meaningful relationship you had to heal first i had to heal mm -hmm. first because you can take that trauma from that past relationship into a new relationship even with small things, you are you are a a, a person who is uh, who hasn't healed mm -hmm. is a perfect target for a homosexual. That's mm -hmm. a perfect target because he's targeting women who are either desperate for love or they're injured, mm -hmm. and he's going to provide a sort of healing, and which that from the woman is interpreted as love. Right. So he's meeting women or they are meeting women who may be injured coming off of bad relationships who needs, needs healing. He provides a little healing, a little attention, mm -hmm. um, affection. And, and in, in turn, she brings him into the home, treats him as, as if he's, uh, the new significant other provides him with a place to stay. It's a trade-off. Mm -hmm. So they, they are looking for women like that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And they damage, you know, I have ran into a lot of damaged women mm -hmm. who just don't get it. Like, I don't understand, you know, if you know that a person doesn't have a job and you're sitting up here, you're struggling Absolutely. Your own damn self. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But you're going to, you you know, and in the process, it's like a pattern. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's some people that I have heard the stories from and it's a pattern with them. You know, the you know, it's funny and uh, uh, from the uh, studies that I've done over the, over the years and writing Let's the book. Let's talk about that. Yes. The uh, this is this is going to sound crazy, but it's absolutely true. So. Um, if you have a woman who is well off, well, she's doing really well financially, mm -hmm. right? I mean, she has a huge home. She has a lot of money. You would think that would be the perfect target for a con man. Right. It's not. No, it's not. It's the woman who, mm -hmm. like you just said, is mm -hmm. struggling financially. Yeah. She may be just surviving Paycheck to the paycheck. paycheck. Mm -hmm. But that's the perfect target for a man like that because she is looking for someone to share that misery with. Oh my God. You see, Mr. Williams. She's looking for, they're looking for someone to just be there. Even, you know, nobody wants to suffer alone. Mm -hmm. So uh, a con man, well, I, I call them social con men. Yes. They're looking for a person who is suffering that way because he knows she may barely be able to pay the rent on the apartment, mm -hmm. but she is the one who will move me in before that middle class woman. Will. Right. Because see the middle class woman or the woman who's well to do, she's going to uh, put a bit more scrutiny on you. Mm -hmm. Whereas that low income 
She just wants you there. She needs somebody there. Mm -hmm. She may have children in the house, which I talk about in the book, the the um, babysitting stepdads, as I call them. Ooh, Mr. Williams. <laughs> who? So you may have a woman who doesn't uh, have a lot, mm -hmm. but she may have children that the fathers aren't in the children's lives. Right. So now that's a perfect situation for a social con man, mm -hmm. a, a hobo sexual, because um, he can just come in. It justifies him not having a job because he can just be there with the children. Right. He will act as if he cares for the children when he really doesn't care about the children. Mm -hmm. He could be someone who, you know, is a danger to the children. Children, right. But because that woman is so desperate for company as well as a father figure for her children, she will move just about, and I'm sure we all know women like this, mm -hmm. right? Or we have known women like right. this. Right. They will move just about anyone mm -hmm. into their homes uh, just because they're desperate to provide their children with someone in the house. And mm -hmm. someone, again, to share that misery that they're going through. Mm -hmm. And these men are targeting women like that. Perfect example. You got to ask yourself, and I talk about this in the book as well. How does a man, and I, and again, when I say things like this, I'm not talking about all, mm -hmm. right? But how how is it that a man can get out of prison for 10 years and within two weeks be living in a woman's home? You better. <sighs> Didn't I tell y'all this was going to be um, the opening, okay, <laughs> for 2023? All you right, gotta, we getting real. You got to ask yourself, how is it, and again, I'm not saying that all men out of prison or bad. I, mm -hmm. I am definitely not saying that. That's for the, right. But for the sake of uh, th this conversation in reference to the book, ask yourself, how does a man spend five years, 10 years, where he basically has lost everything, everything. when he was in prison, mm -hmm. but he's able to get out and within weeks, not only being being begin a new relationship, but be is living in the home of that new relationship release with, with the woman's children mm -hmm. release to that home because a lot of times when you're coming out of prison you have to have a place to go and this person has to say okay he can come here mm -hmm. this is going to be his address this is going to be his Absolutely. telephone number all of that stuff oh my god because because these men are targeting women when they go back to, especially these inner cities, like where I'm from, I'm mm -hmm. from inner city, Baltimore, they're returning to these inner cities where they're, where there's, they're full of women who don't have, uh, uh, the fathers of their children aren't around. Wow. Um, they're desperate for love and companionship. And these men know it. They know it. You can go to most nightclubs or bars in inner cities and meet women like this every night you go in there. And mm -hmm. these women and these guys know how to recognize these women. These women. And with Do you think that these men, these guys have a little bit of narcissistic Absolutely. But it's easy to is it, it, Oh god. Here's, here's the thing. It's easy to think or to feel like you're godlike mm -hmm. when you surround yourself with people like the people you're targeting. Right, right. You know? Um, you, 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 most of these, and it's funny because it's a, it's a, it's a cycle because most men from where I'm from, mm -hmm. right. Um, they're, they're from broken homes. Yes. They're from homes where there's no father in the home, mm -hmm. right. There's, they're from homes where the mother is struggling financially. Right. Mm. So who better Who's better able to recognize that type of household than these men? The God Almighty. Mm. See, they're 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 they were born and raised in these environments. So when they when they're looking for a place to stay, mm -hmm. they're they already know how or what to look for because they're from that. Right. So they're from a woman, or they were born and raised by a woman who suffered from a man victimizing them in that way and now they and become they watched it they watched it so mm -hmm. now they become the victimizer 
good God Almighty. To do that to another woman. And the cycle repeats itself. Repeats itself. Yeah. Mm -mm. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a horrible cycle. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Do you think that these men, because I have came in contact with some that, because like I said, I'm on a healing process. I, I have, I had to do two years of therapy. Right, right, right. You know? and, and it's unfortunate that most people don't seek therapy yeah. after a situation because you should. Yeah, right. you have to seek therapy. Totally agree. You know, because I'm I'm 52 years old. Mm -hmm. I will be 53 this year. Okay, okay. You know, so. So you me too. Yeah, mm -hmm. it will have, you know, I'm at a point in my life where I don't want to, I want to be settled, not with just anybody. Right. I want to have something to offer because a lot of men are just not looking for that physical and that financial right, thing. Right. They're looking for somebody. Absolutely. Something up here. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. With something up here, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, I have to get it together mm -hmm. because you can't take, I've been through some things, you know, in my life, even with having children mm -hmm. and, you know, not dealing with everything that came out of that. Right. Being a single parent, mm -hmm. you know, having these three beautiful children, but ending up a single parent, mm -hmm. raising three children, putting them through college, all of that stuff. Right. You know, on my own. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that was something. And then to, as you get older, you know, I'm, I'm, I know what a healthy relationship is. Right, right, right. I didn't know that. Until I went through therapy. There you though. go. Yeah. And so I tell people I I walk in my truth, mm -hmm. and my my breakup was kind of public in a sense. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Where people kind of knew what was going on, right, right? You know, and so I had to save that poker face. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And continue to evolve. And, you know, my branding myself right. because I'm a missing and murder advocate. Mm -hmm. I've been advocating for 30 years wow. and in radio for seven. Wow. So, yeah, it's, you know, I had to keep that going, but I knew that I needed to get some help. Right. And it's unfortunate that most, see, you came to a conclusion that most, uh, and, and, and speaking of, uh, because you're, you're a woman, uh, I'm going to say that most women in those situations don't come to that conclusion. Mm -hmm. They're, 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 the, 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 what you're taught as a young person is uh, if one train breaks down, mm -hmm. climb onto another train. Climb onto another. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what we're taught at a very young age. And even if that train breaks down, you wait for another train yeah. and you climb on the next and you one. you climb on the next one. Our idea mm -hmm. of therapy is replacement. Right. You see, Ooh, God. We, 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 we tend Ooh. to, you know, we don't like this car. You replace that car mm -hmm. when you should be replacing your mindset when it comes to transportation. Good God almighty. See? So it's the same way with relationships. We meet someone, it doesn't work out. They hurt us. Our mindset is replace them, mm -hmm. try to find someone who's not going to hurt us and we'll continue to be hurt and hurt and hurt until you do you do what you chose to do mm -hmm. which was seeking therapy and you change your mindset toward yeah. relationships and men and look at you now right See? because you're not going to make those same mistakes mm -hmm. um and and i to circle back around to a man who may be out to take advantage of you he's not going to be able to take advantage of someone like you because you have gotten yourself together mentally. Exactly. So you you you're looking at relationships through a different lens. Exactly. Right? And that's what it is. That's the key. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's why I tell women all the time and men mm -hmm. going through that healing process is very important. It's very important. You can't just jump into jump out of one bad relationship and jump into another and think that it's not going to turn out even worse. The replacement there. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it works across the board. You're just replacing one problem with another. What are some of the signs of mm -hmm. a woman or a man or in that can spot these type of things? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
You know, it, 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 the, 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 it, I'm glad you asked that question because I, I, that's one of the questions I normally get when I sit down and mm-hmm. talk to people. Um, the simplest one, the easiest one is um, he's unemployed. Now, let me explain. Oh, sorry. Let me explain that. Mm-hmm. Because there's plenty. I, I've been unemployed in my mm-hmm. life. So it's not that all unemployed men, men are, that way. are bad, mm-hmm. right? I, that is that is not, not what, what saying. I'm saying. That's right. No. That's not what we're saying, y'all. Okay. So but, listen. Right. But get them pens and pencils, like them pens yeah. and papers together so you can jot down this. Yeah, I, I, because I, I don't want to be for people to think I'm putting down people who are unemployed. That is right, not what I'm saying. That's not what we're doing here. No. Mm-hmm. Um, but I believe that if you were to meet a person, man or female, uh, who is unemployed in mm-hmm. between jobs, uh, he or she deserves a bit more scrutiny than if you were to meet someone who has a job. Right. Um, in order to protect yourself, I think that there's certain, and I, and I, I referenced this in the book, um, there are certain questions that you should ask a man when you meet him. Mm-hmm. One of them being, why aren't you working? Mm-hmm. I don't see anything wrong with that question. Right. People avoid that question because <laughs> again, it goes back to, it goes back to approaching a woman. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, this is what I mean by that. I, I said earlier that the perfect target for a social con man is a woman who is struggling in her life. That's right. Mentally and physically, right? Mm-hmm. And, and financially. She's a perfect target. Why? Because she is going to be a bit more reluctant to ask those type of questions because she don't want to scare you off. Right. If you're attractive, a person who is desperate for love is not going to want to ask a question of a new mate that may scare him off. Mm-hmm. So she, if he's unemployed, she's going to take any, uh, she's basically going to accept almost any reason he gives for it mm. because she's desperate. Because she's desperate. Right. If, if you're not desperate and like yourself, if you, you've healed from your situation, mm-hmm. you're going to ask him, well, why are you not working? Mm-hmm. And then the question becomes, which to me Mr. is. Mr. Williams, I ain't even getting all into that. I'm, I don't even think like, <laughs> I'm a, I don't even think I'm going to come across. <laughs> Someone who's. <laughs> yeah. See, but, but because it, 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 because it's like now, now, okay, like back then, right? Maybe you know, but now uh-huh, it's now, like you wouldn't, you wouldn't even give it. No, a, but but the but the problem, and, and that's I don't care why how cute you are, how cute that smile is, with that dimple. You would be surprised mm-hmm. that there is a large number of women out here, yes. black and white. Mm-hmm. who will totally accept and embrace. And there's a reason why And a lot of women that I've talked to over the years while working on this book, um, I, it, t- it, took me, it took me a while to get them to admit this, mm-hmm. but this is a fact, what I'm about to say. There is a percentage of women who want unemployed men because they're easy, easy to control them. Good God of my... Because if, you, if I'm a woman and you're living in my house and you're unemployed, I have a, a bit more control over you. Over you, right. You're going to be a bit more dedicated to me because everything that you need, you get from me. Right. So a woman who is struggling in her, her own life, having a difficult time finding love, she meets a guy who's unemployed, she moves him in the house, he is indebted to her. Mm-hmm. You see? Yeah. Um, the biggest question that I always tell women to ask a man, not just the why are you unemployed question, mm-hmm. more importantly, why are you comfortable being unemployed and trying to date me? Mm. Being unemployed is one thing. But ask him, why are you unemployed? But then again, why are you comfortable tr- attempting to date me? While you're unemployed. Unemployed, right. What type of respect do you have for me as a woman? Mm-hmm. Again, I'm speaking if I yeah. if I were a woman. Mm-hmm. What, what type of respect do you have for me? Or what do you think of me that you being unemployed mm-hmm. would be okay with me? Would be okay with me, yeah. Why do you think that I am going to be okay spending my money on you? Right. These are the type of questions that you, that a woman should ask a man, mm-hmm. you know, and I think that a, 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 a man's 
um, morality mm -hmm. should come into question. If he's willing to pursue you and he has absolutely nothing to offer you. If he's, li if he's living on the couch of a family member or a friend, shouldn't he be spending all of his time trying to correct that predicament? Right, right. How does he have the energy or the time to be pursuing you? Then his mentality towards being unemployed has to come into question because obviously that doesn't mean anything to him mm. because he's pursuing you and trying to date while he's crashing on someone's couch. Yeah, or just how about the scenario of leaving a relationship? Absolutely. And in, in the book, I talk about vine swinging. Mm. So, so oh, there, God Almighty, he got words for it and everything. Okay. <laughs> there's there's, uh, there's uh, one type of uh, hobosexual is the couch jumper. Mm. A couch jumping hobosexual, H O B O sexual. And I say that because some, sometimes when I'm talking about it, people go, homosexual? No, 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 not mm -hmm. ho hobo sexual. Hobo meaning, you know, um, homeless. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one type of hobosexual that I talk about is the couch jumping hobosexual. That's an individual who goes from woman, woman's bed to, to woman's, woman's bed, bed to woman's bed to woman's bed. Ooh. And what he does, let's say I meet you mm -hmm. and I live with you for, you bring me in. Once you catch on that I'm a con man, mm -hmm. while I'm living with you, I'm setting up the next situation. You're setting up the next situation. And here, here's where it gets deep. I'm using your car. I'm using your money to woo that next target. Oh, my God. I'm dropping you off at work in your car, mm -hmm. taking your car, taking your car and taking her out, taking her out, spending mm -hmm. money on the date with your money mm. so that when you finally catch on maybe a month, maybe two months that I'm a con man, I already have that couch ready. Oh, my God. I drop your car off. I just got chills. I drop your car off. I steal some money from you. Mm -hmm. I go move in with her. I tell her that you, you and I didn't work out because you turned out to be a fool mm -hmm. who didn't appreciate me and all that I was doing for you. So I make you look bad, but I make myself look really good, good in, the in the eyes, eyes. of the next mm -hmm. target. I move in with her. I start dropping her off at work mm -hmm. in preparation. Well, telling lies. And, oh, definitely telling lies. Mm -hmm. I am wooing the next chick with her car, with the next target's car. Mm -hmm. And this cycle just keeps Oh, how about the up. car that they to help you get? Yeah, absolutely. And that's de that definitely takes place because it goes back to something that you referenced earlier, which is credit. Mm -hmm. Most of these guys don't have credit. Mm -hmm. So the perfect target for a con man is someone who not only has her own, but she has great credit. Yeah. Now, I will sleep with you. I will woo you. I'll give you as many orgasms that, that you possibly can want mm -hmm. so that I can get you to co-sign or put a car in your name. Or say, look, I don't want the rent money this month. Okay, go ahead and take that money and mm -hmm. go get you a vehicle. Save up some money to go, you know what I'm saying? Go do this or go do that. One one uh one guy that I talk about, one story that that's in the book uh is where a guy meets a woman. He's he, he's con he's the in the book he's considered the professional homosexual. He's someone who is who has perfected the art of conning every woman that he meets. Good he's God he's a professional. Almighty. He's a professional. This is somebody, a professional homosexual is someone who's never going to get a job. He's mm -hmm. always going to live off some woman. Mm -hmm. And uh, in his story, he met a woman who had her own car. He started driving it so much that he got it personally customized to fit him. To fit him. Good God of mine. Changed the rims. And what she paid for all this now? He changed the rims. He uh, redid the interior. You sound like we didn't been talking to the same people and got, the same damn people, Mr. Williams. We, listen, that's why the book is so important because <laughs> although I call it the taboo topic, the, the introduction of the book is called an introduction into a taboo topic. Right. Because people don't talk about it, but it's happening everywhere to everybody. Yes, it is. It is. And this guy, 
redid her whole car. He was driving it so much that eventually everyone began to think that his the car was his. Mm -hmm. He he eventually got her to trade that in for his own car. She started taking public transportation. And he was driving that car. Or waiting for him to pick her up. Oh, he stopped doing that. Yeah. Oh, he stopped doing that. She 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 had to take public transportation. He stopped doing that. Oh my God. And this is happening every day. Every single you ain't every lying day. about that. Every day. Because I know a story like that, a real life story. You ain't lying about mm -hmm. that. You ain't never lied. This is real. It's it's happening every day. Uh, these these guys are I call them uh social predators. And 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 they are they they, they it, 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 let me say for the record, um, of course we all know that there are women who are taking advantage of men who have right. We mm -hmm. all know that we call them yeah. gold, we call them gold diggers, gold diggers. But mm -hmm. it's but we it's easy for us to talk about that. Yes. But rarely do you find people talking about it from a man, a man doing that to women. Exactly. Right. And you that, don't never hear about never that. Never hear this that. The first time mm -hmm. that I've ever heard. You know, even just reading the title mm -hmm. and everything. When I, like I said, minding my business, <laughs> I find you and that title to your book. And then just reading mm -hmm. it, you know, I'm like, Oh my God, if this is something we need to talk about. Mm -hmm. We need to get this out here and know people need to know that there are professionals. Oh yeah. Out here mm -hmm. that can help you deal with mm -hmm. that now the narcissist mm -hmm. type of situation i have been hearing getting a lot of bad stories mm -hmm. absolutely on that situation what is your take on that what is your definition of a narcissist someone who thinks they are supreme over everything else and um, the the in order to live the lifestyle in which we've been talking about men who's living that way, mm -hmm. you have to think you're smarter than everybody around you. Everybody around you got to. So so it, it, you bring up uh, narcissism. That's that kind of goes side by side with a person being a homosexual because you can't be. A hobosexual without thinking you're going to be able to outsmart everybody that Ooh, you meet. Oh my god! Yeah, I think I, th I think it, this is a, what I believe. I I it's funny. I know people who are uh, professionals, people, right? Mm -hmm. In in whatever field they're in, and then of course I know I have friends and people who are, um, you know, maybe struggling or maybe even on the illegal side right. of the world, right? Mm -hmm. We all know people like like that right. right uh what's funny though the trait of being a narcissist is found in my opinion and from my experiences in the people who definitely should not be thinking that way mm. it's normally not the super intelligent or the people who are um well known mm -hmm. or, well, or successful in their particular fields mm -hmm. it's normally the people who just have no right <laughs> to think that they're better than everybody mm -hmm. else. And that's when it comes into play with these type of men, because they are walking around thinking that, that I bad. deserve mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. to take care of me. Yeah. Or oh, I, I deserve this situation. Yeah. Cause I've had brothers complain to me, you know, come to me and say, you know, this person is how in the hell this person get this award mm -hmm. or how in the hell this person get this woman or get this situation, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm this and I'm, you know what I'm saying? I done been yeah. out here. I'm the, you know, that right there, that bothers me when I hear that because it's like. It must be a lot of narcissists out here. I'm telling you. Let me let me say this as well. because I meant to say this to you earlier when we were talking about, because you asked me, and I think this is a very imp important aspect of the discussion. How do you recognize these type of people? Mm -hmm. Another question that you got to ask yourself when you meet someone is this. Uh, and a lot of, and I've, I've gotten a lot of uh, people who have, uh, especially on social media, they'll come back at me with this. And I, and, mm -hmm. and I, and I, and I, and I understand why they do, right. but they're not 
really listening to what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Let me say this, because it's, it's kind of controversial. You got to ask yourself when you meet someone who you who who is presenting themselves to you as being perfect. Right. Mm -hmm. Because keep in mind, that's what he has to do. Mm -hmm. a, a social predator has to present himself his himself to you. He got to keep that image. He has to be mm -hmm. perfect mm -hmm. for you in order to win you over to move. Because his goal is to move you into his home. Mm -hmm. That's his goal. Right. He has no place to stay. Mm -hmm. He has no money. Right. Keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. So I find that people think that this is this aspect of it is very controversial. When I don't think it is. You got to ask yourself, you're perfect. Why are you single? Mm. Right. That opens up a door for a conversation. I'm not saying that all perfect people can't be single. That's not what I'm saying. Right. right? And that's the and that's why I think people don't they're not getting what I'm saying. Because mm -hmm. that's, that's not what I mean. Right. But if I'm about to date you mm -hmm. or possibly move you into my home, I think it's right for me to ask, you seem perfect. You're attractive. You seem to, ha to have a good head on your shoulders. Can I ask you why you're single? Mm -hmm. What's wrong with that question? Right? right. If I'm applying for a job and they're, they're hiring me to be a cook, and for some reason, every time they hire a cook, the cook quits. Don't I have a right to ask that restaurant, why can't you keep a cook in, the, in this restaurant? Right. Is anything wrong with that? No, it's not. So if I meet a person and they tell me, well, I just got out of a relationship. Well, how many relationships have you been in in the last 10 years? Oh, I've, been, I've, I've been in and out of relationships. I just can't find the right one. Mm -hmm. I think I have a right to ask, why isn't anyone holding on to you? Right. Because you you appear to be a catch. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to be just a catch for me. Right. You're going to be a catch for every other guy walking around. Exactly. Why won't a guy hold on to you? Mm. Now, again, there's going to be people in the audience that's going to say, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm perfect and I'm single. I'm, I'm not saying that something's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. But if you approach me and you're trying to date me, I have a right to ask, ask you, you this question. Why that's are you right. single? Why did the last relationship end? Oh my god. And I think you should question any person that you meet and they put all the blame on the relationship failing on the other person. Because that's going to make me go, you're lying to me. A relationship is 50-50. Mm -hmm. He may have done things wrong, but you're telling me you were perfect? Right. Can I talk to him? Mhm. Mm you know, I I it's just I I just think that we tend to, and, and women, I talk about this in the book, women tend to scrutinize more the babysitter that they hire to take their kids to than they do the man that they move in to, to their, babysit their, their kids. Children. That's right. Think about that. Mm -hmm. They know more about their kids' basketball coach than they do some men that they move into their home. Why is that? You have a right to ask someone who's trying to date you, why are you so single? Why are you so single? If you such this good man you're, 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 or this good woman that, go, that everybody is raving over and, you know. Right. And again, I'm not saying that there's not a legitimate justification for it. I'm not saying that mm -hmm. because there could be, right? But tell me about it. Tell me about it. Mm -hmm. Let me hear your story, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of avoiding all of that because you don't want to scare this guy off, now you're setting yourself up to bring a problem into your home, Good which women are doing every day. Every day. Yeah. Ask mm -hmm. him, why, 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 don't, why are you sleeping on someone's sofa? Mm -hmm. Is that a bad... Why you was into a long relationship that long and it just came to an end? I'll tell you something else, and this is very controversial. I know people go, well, that's not healthy. Or that that's something that's just not going to happen, right? But in my opinion, I think women, and especially in today's society, because there's so many horrible people in the world. Yes. Mm -hmm. If I were to go apply for a job, that job is going to ask me for references. Right. Why don't you do that when the most important thing for you to do is bring a man into your home? You don't ask for references. 
If I meet a woman, I'm, I'm, I'm married, but if I were, if I were single and I met a woman and in today's society and what I know now, now. Mm-hmm. what I know now, right? I think I probably would want to speak to her ex-husband. Mm. It's just me. Yeah. It's me. I had a conversation like that the other night. I know women who I've spoken to when writing this book, they were, they, the, the men who took advantage of them, they never, not one time in the entire time that the man lived with them had ever met any of his friends. Any of his friends. Mm-hmm. Never ran into any of the horrible exes that the man talked about. Talked about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it ended up, he was the horrible individual. Mm-hmm. So I always say, What's wrong with me speaking to your ex? Because if he, if you're scared that he's going to talk that horribly about you, I'd have had women speaking me after the relationship, and I knew nothing about them. Wow, I knew nothing about them. Okay, wow. because once it was over, it was mm. over. Right. You right. know, I, you know, I wish that person the best. I wasn't trying to worry about who he was seeing mm. and who was, you know what I'm saying? None of that, whether he had the next victim or whatever. Right. It right. wasn't my concern. Right. All I was worried about was healing myself mm. so that I would not wind up in another situation like that. Right. And, and evolving in everything that I do. And see the, the, and that, that's what you should have done. The, the, the problem is though, your and I'm assuming mm-hmm. by what you said, the your ex was a was a problem guy, mm-hmm. right? He moves on from you and meets another woman. Mm-hmm. Now he hasn't changed, mm-hmm. so he's still a problem, right? That woman would have avoided a lot of headache had he talked to had she talked to him and said, "I want to talk to Rose. Mm-hmm. I know you guys hate each other, but I just want to." Talk to her. Before yeah. before I move you into my home around my children, mm-hmm. let me talk to Rose. Right. Now, you could have said, I hate him and don't be calling my house and mm-hmm. blah, 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 blah. But at least if he's willing to give his new woman your number, at least. Or information or even sit and have a conversation yeah. about me. Yeah, absolutely. Even yeah. sit and have a convo yeah. about me. You got to you got to you got to be suspicious about a man who in trying to date you, he's unwilling to introduce you to his past. Mm-hmm. That should be a. That's the issue. That should be a red flag. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that should be a red flag. Yeah, you, you're finding out that this man is a problem and he's lived with you for six months. Mm-hmm. You're finding out that this man has issues molesting children and he's been living with you and your children mm-hmm. for six months. For six months, right. Is we have to, you know, dig deep. Like yeah. I said, I had women reaching out to me mm-hmm. that I didn't even know. I'm walking. I'm, I'm a popular person, mm-hmm. you know, and I go places and... You know, you don't want to be in a situation where you got some somebody standing over right. on the sidelines looking at you can have some hatred Absolutely. or animosity. It has to be something that's not right there mm-hmm. in here in order for that person to want to seek you in I, the first place. I agree. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. In in order for them to want to seek you in the first place, mm-hmm. it has to be something going on with them up there. I don't care what that man, and I've been in situations where men have tried to tell me mm-hmm. certain things. First of all, I don't want to hear about what that woman did. I want to hear about what you did. Absolutely. Right. To make this woman mm-hmm. be this way. What part, you. what part did you play? What part did you what play did in you this? Play? What part did you entertain? You ever notice when you meet someone and they talk about their ex, they present their ex to be such a horrible person, but they never mm-hmm. speak about what they may have done. Mm-hmm. Not to make him a horrible person, mm-hmm. but what things may get, you may have done that hurt him. Right. right? I want to hear the whole story because keep in mind, I'm not dating your ex. I'm dating you. You, exactly. I need to know the things that you did. Don't tell me how horrible he mm-hmm. was. What, what are some of the things that you may exactly. have done? Exactly. Yeah. You know, I'm just not the type of person that even coming into a new relationship, I'm not going to sit 
and compare notes. No, right. With my new man mm-hmm. about my ex. Right. I don't see no sense in that. No, you're not. You're not getting anything from because that. exactly because to be honest with you, I'm and I'm talking about myself. I'm not going to be the same person. Right. Right. There you go. And that's because of the my healing journey. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be the same person. So that part healing is accepting all of the things that happen, right? Mm-hmm. And doing things to make a difference. Absolutely. And make changes. Mm-hmm. Okay, a lot it's, of it's growing. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. growing. It's growing. A lot of people don't do that, like you said. A lot of people. Their way of getting over a situation is moving on to the oh, next yeah. situation. Yeah, don't change yourself. Just change mm-hmm. who you with. Just change right. who you with. Don't change yourself at all. Mm-hmm. I found the problem with that. I wasn't going to do that. Right. Because I know, in being a human being, that don't nobody deserve that mess. Mm-hmm. They don't deserve me to have triggers. There you go. You understand what I'm right. saying? Because... What a lot of people don't understand when you move from one relationship to another and you have not healed. You're carrying all you're that carrying stuff. You're carrying all you. that stuff. So mm-hmm. a person can do something similar yeah. or, you know what I'm saying, look a certain way or wear a certain cologne or mm-hmm. whatever. And you're going to think that it's that person. And it that triggers. You, mm-hmm, and triggers. it triggers some mm-hmm. things. You know what I'm saying? It triggers a lot of emotion and everything. And I just refuse to go through that in my right. life, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And just the person that I am, you know, because it's people that has been in my life all of my life. So mm-hmm. they know who I am. Right. You know, they know who I am, even though I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I yeah, even though I forgot. <laughs> I had some people saying, just you crazy. <laughs> like if you don't get it together. Right. What is your problem? <laughs> you know, and I had to, that was like, that's that was my beginning of saying, Black, you got to do better right. for yourself. You want, you know, you want, you walk in your truth. You want greatness. Mm-hmm. So, and, and you want a relationship and you want to, you know, all of that stuff. But you're going to have to bring it. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to change. Mm-hmm. You got to change. You got to you You can't you, 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 you can't just go from one bad situation mm-hmm. and, and into another situation, carrying the same mindset that you had from that previous situation. You can't you just can't, you do, can't that. do that. No, you can't do that. Mm-hmm. If you do, you're setting yourself up to be victimized. Right. It's a fact. Yeah. What are some of the things that people can do to avoid? You know, I w- I would say um, if you meet someone that is struggling in their life, mm-hmm. if they're in a bad place, um, uh, if they're struggling financially, if they they don't have a place to stay, they're mm-hmm. unemployed, right? Which is basically what we're talking about when we talk about a homosexual. And but you like them. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with dating them without them moving into your home, oh, right? Date them, hang out with them while they're getting themselves together or getting themselves on their feet. Mm-hmm. But don't move them into don't your move home. Them into your home, right? And there's there's a, a quote that I I use in the book that I, I that sums up sort of this. It, it, it's a woman standing in a boat can never trust the love that's offered by a drowning man. Ooh. My God, say that one more time <laughs> for the people in the back, because you ain't did nothing but bought the truth here today. A, oh, my God. A woman standing- I said intimate conversation, <laughs> y'all, but I didn't know it was going to get this deep. I'm telling you, like, who? Okay. So, a, 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 I think it's important that women just keep this in their head, right? Mm-hmm. So, a woman standing in a boat can never trust the the love that's offered from a drowning man because as long as he's in the water his heart belongs to the boat 
Right. Not the woman. Mm -hmm. Regardless of how much he may claim otherwise. Right. His heart is directed towards the boat, not the woman. And I think women have to realize that when they meet a man who's struggling real bad, you cannot trust what he's saying to you. I'm not saying that he doesn't love you. I'm saying you can't trust that love. Right. Because he's drowning. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's a, 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 a if you talk to any lifeguard, they'll tell you that a, a child who's drowning and a mother jumps into the water to save that child. Self, when once self preservation kicks in, whichever's drowning will drag the other down with it, mm -hmm. trying to stay afloat. Mm -hmm. It's a fact, it's a fact, and you know, there's no deeper love than a mother and child. But when self preservation kicks in, when the, when you're trying to survive, mm -hmm. you know, you will pull down trying to get above, get your head above the water, you right. pull anything down with anything you, down with so you can't trust. The love that's offered from a drowning man you just can't so so to answer your question when you said what things that you can do don't move a person into your home until he's he or she has proven that they're capable and willing to support the home financially don't just assume because he's saying, okay, baby, I'm, I'm, I'm going to move in from my mother's house to your house mm -hmm. or my ex's home to your home, and I'm going to find me a job eventually, and I'm going to start paying some bills. What has he done? What has this new man done to prove to you that he's capable of I'm supporting that, that claim? Mm -hmm. Right? So that's number one. If you meet someone and he's struggling, you can date him. I'm not saying don't date him, but don't move that man into your home and definitely don't right. start supporting him that way. Now, you could give him a little help to help him get a job. Mm -hmm. Right. But don't move him into your home. I think that's a big mistake. Right. Big mistake. That's one. And I'm going to use you as an example. Don't start seeking love until you can love yourself. Right. Heal. Seek counseling. Get yourself together. Get over that past relationship before you start opening up your door to someone new. Mm -hmm. Because if you do that too early, you're opening yourself up to be victimized. Right. You, you definitely are. Mm -hmm. And uh, lastly, I'll say if you if, to avoid being becoming a victim, don't behave like one. Mm. Know, that's the biggest. Because that predator, which they are, they're looking for prey. And if you're walking around and you're looking like prey and, be, and behaving like prey, for example, you meet a guy at a, at a club or a bar and you bring him into your home to have sex, it's just an orgasm that you're looking for. Right. He's looking for a place to live. He's looking for a place to live. So you, you have proven to him or given him the belief that you're willing to share everything that you have. You only wanted to share your body. Mm -hmm. You brought him in your front door. Right. He slept in your bed. He slept in your bed. That's all he needed to see. Mm -hmm. And he's going to build off of that. He's going to start catering to uh, the, that, that aspect of your personality that needs to be catered to. Mm -hmm. You're someone seeking love. You're desperate for, for a father figure for your kids. He's going to start providing that for you because he's targeting your bedroom. He needs a place to sleep. So he's going to fool you and trick you into thinking that he's the perfect man, he's the perfect gentleman that you should build a, a, a life with by moving him into your home when he's only looking for your bed. Mm -hmm. That's it. So don't be a prey. Don't don't do that. You know, have some pride in yourself and be willing to ask important questions. Why are you unemployed? Why are you sleeping on your friend's sofa? Why are you doing that? And most importantly. While those things are taking place, why are you trying to date me? Mm. You do that. Watch how he answers. And I think you'll be able to see. You'll be able to see. You'll be able to see. Yeah. Now, I'm a missing person advocate, right? And I, I, like I admire to, that. Yeah, that's, that's thank you good. so much, Mr. Williams. I like to ask, you know, my guests, what is your thoughts about missing persons knowing that 
in this country, we have over 75,000 missing black girls and women. You know, the, I, I have one child, I have a daughter who is, um, she, she's a, she's a student at, at Howard university. Mm. And, um, the hardest thing for me, because we're very close, mm. I've been with her, um, of course, all her life. And, um, I've been a protector. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about this particular subject, it's a hard one for me because right. then I have to imagine, because I can't imagine someone else right, at this particular moment. It's hard for me to imagine another child. When I think of a child being kidnapped or taken, I only can think of my daughter. Right. right? So as a father, it's, I got to be honest, I never really thought about it until I had a child. Mm. And and that's just me being honest, right? Right. Right. And I think that that's the problem in our society. Mm -hmm. If an issue is not affecting us, mm -hmm. we don't think about we it. We don't think about it. That's my problem. Because the moment I came, like you came across me mm -hmm. when you reached out to me, and I saw what you were doing, mm -hmm. it hit me because it's like <laughs> that could be. Or could have been mm -hmm. my daughter right. in those stories that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. I think like most things, we tend to avoid them if they're not affecting us. Right. And we have to get out of that mm. because it is. Or it can. Or it can. And I, 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 I'm just being completely honest. I tell people all the time, no one is exempt. No one is exempt. Mm -hmm. When I was, I'll, I'll tell you this, this quick quick story growing up in Baltimore when I was around I want to say 10 not probably 9 or 10 mm -hmm. uh, a guy came into my neighborhood and walked out of my long story short offering to purchase or give me and one of my friends a pair of sneakers he walked me and this friend out of the neighborhood wow and um, it wasn't until we were a couple of miles away that I started to think that something was wrong and we took off running. My friend mm -mm. and I back, mm -mm. back home. By the time we got back home, it had already become a big deal in my neighborhood that, right. that me and my, my friend both, I think he's a year, he was a year younger than me, so nine and 10, mm -hmm. that this man had walked us, we were last seen walking out of the neighborhood. Walking out of the neighborhood. With this man who had Good never God been found almighty. again. Who had never been found again, right? Ooh. Now, we, he didn't touch us. He didn't get the opportunity, but he obviously he had bad intentions. He walked right. us out of the neighborhood. So for those people who think that this doesn't happen, mm -hmm. it happens every single day. Um, that's my personal experience mm -hmm. with it. So I know for a fact that it happens, uh, it happens to people every day. Um, I think one of the biggest issues within the black community is that so many horrible subjects is so taboo. People just don't like to talk about it. They don't it. like to talk about it. Yeah, they just don't like to talk about mm -hmm. it. And I think I, I admire you for doing what you're doing. I remember when I was talking to somebody and I was telling them that I was coming on your podcast, I said, wow, I hate the fact that I'm going on there talking about my book because what she's doing is so important mm -hmm. that I felt like, you know, I'm, I'm, my, my, my. But what you're doing with the, the information that I want to stop you on that. Because the reason why you're here is because the information that you're putting out is so important. I thank you for that. But you understand what I I'm do. saying? This is a community base. We talk about things that go on in the community. I do. And I thank you for mm -hmm. that. But but what you're doing and what you're talking about is so much more important. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I definitely uh, admire you for taking the time to talk about things that people like myself in the past, mm -hmm. you know, I, li I like to be as, as, as honest as I possibly can when it comes to, to, to uh, my, my mindset. Prior to me having a child, I just didn't think about it. Right, right. I just didn't think about it. Mm -hmm. um, but um, you, you are doing a great job opening up people's eyes and, I, and, I, and I, you should definitely continue doing that. 
I appreciate sure. that. Yeah. And I, you know, I want to tell you to, you know, just thank you for, because you're saying a lot of things that people don't have the, how can I say it? They just don't have the power. They don't have, they just can't say it. Right. They want to know how they're suffering through these situations. Mm -hmm. That's why when I saw that homosexual, <laughs> it meant a lot to see that because that thing is deep. Mm -hmm. It goes it is. deep it is. and people are really damaged, mm -hmm. especially emotionally. Absolutely. You know, mentally, financially, and just coming out of a situation like that. Sometimes it takes seven to 10 years in order for you to bounce back financially. Think think about it like this. Um, in the jungle, a, a predator like a lion, when he's targeting prey to eat, mm -hmm. he's looking for the weakest among the flock. Right. He's looking for that, 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 that that um that prey that's limping mm -hmm. that's alone obviously has issues right. he's not looking for someone that a prey that's healthy he, that that's going to be a problem for him to mm -hmm. to get it's the same way in <laughs> it's the same way with uh these social predators like a homosexual targeting women they're looking for the weakest amongst us mm -hmm. you know they're looking for the emotional emotionally drained the the women who are suffering because of past relationships those are that's that 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 um gazelle in the jungle mm -hmm. that's walking through uh limping mm -hmm. that's the one that the lion is going to be looking for the same way with the social predator right He's looking for that 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 limping prey yeah so you should, you should you want you want to work on getting yourself healthy and then you'll find that uh, less opportunities for these type of people to be targeting you. Right. Get yourself work on yourself first. Mm -hmm. Make yourself healthy because if you're healthy, you're gonna walk like you're healthy. Mm -hmm. You're gonna look healthy. You're gonna talk like healthy, you're healthy. Right. Yeah. How many books have you read? This is my actually. This is my second book. First one published. Wow. Yeah. First one published, and um, the uh, uh, seven day switch is the first. That one actually should be out this summer uh that's the one that i'm working on now just getting that together so that that'll be out this summer mm -hmm. um yeah this is actually the second one first one published wow mm -hmm. how can we get this new book the and how can we find you i mean i because i you know i know how to find you <laughs> you know like i was lucky you know but how can we find you? the uh the ebook is actually uh available now on amazon it, it, it's an ebook um kindle but you can download it uh off of amazon kindle now the paperback will be available in just under two weeks that will be uh available also on amazon um i'm actually having on the day after valentine's day february 15th uh is my official launch and book signing at busboys and poets mm -hmm. in arlington okay so i hope that uh you all will come down to mm -hmm. it um i will definitely have copies of the books there uh but that's that's the that's the official uh official uh launch day and launch party signing from there i'm going to go on a putting together now a a, a book tour uh through all of the major uh black cities chicago detroit atlanta and things like that mm -hmm. so um but but uh bus boys and poets february the 15th next month February 15th, Bus Boys and Poets in, uh, in Arlington, Virginia. Yeah, it's, it's, it's God it's my seven o'clock. Everybody's welcome, open to the public. Y'all, this has been a great interview. I appreciate I you having swear, me. I swear, I have to have you back <laughs> with the book when we get the oh, book. Oh, definitely. I'm, you know, I'm going to yeah. drop off the book. Mm -hmm. too, for sure. oh, yeah. But we got to talk about some of the stuff because, see, it'll be out then. And then we can talk about some of the things. I'm open to that, definitely. Okay. Yeah, looking forward to that. Y'all, this has been Mr. G.L. Williams, <laughs> author, Homosexuals Get It. I'm going to be posting where you can buy this book at. Okay? Y'all, we'll be back. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much.
Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to Black Rose Garden Missing and Murder Podcast, hosted by none other than Black Rose.
Y'all know how I do. I share um, flyers of all missing children. We sometimes have issues where we have missing persons who do not have pictures available. Now, trust and believe me, it's not because the website did, just didn't post the picture. A lot of times law enforcement agencies don't have, you know, pictures, you know, but we still have this missing child and we still have to, you know, put the information out there. So the first missing person that I'm going to be talking about is a person that does not have a flyer. I mean, doesn't have a picture. Um, this young person name is Jamaya Brown. Okay. Jamaya is 15 years old and Jamaya is missing from um, her Rico, Virginia. All right. She's been missing since January the 1st, 2023. Okay. Um, like I said, I don't have a picture, but um, she's described as a black female. Um, her hair color is unknown. Her eye color is brown. She's five foot four and she's 200 pounds. Okay. If you have any information, you might know her by name, okay? You might know Jemiah by name, right? We don't have a picture, like I said, but you might just know her by name. But if you have any information on this baby's whereabouts, please contact the Haranko Henrico um, police Department, Rico County Police Department at 804-501-5000. That's 801-804-501-5000, okay? If you have any information, like I said, we don't have a picture of her, but you might know her by name. You know, you might know her by name. And we cannot, I will not, you know, not talk about these young people who, you know, are missing. I come across a lot of cases who they don't have pictures, all right? So it's very important, y'all. You know, you might know her by name. So if you have any information, please contact the Henrico County Police Department. And that is 804 501-5000, okay? So I'm going to move on to the next case. All right. Let me see y'all. Okay. These names, y'all, y'all know we got these. This is the 20th century kids names, okay? So bear with me, <laughs> 20th century, we know we ain't naming them stuff like Rose or you know what I'm saying, Helen, or you know, somebody like that. We naming them these days. So bear with me, all right? Because I might not say it right, all right, but I might have to spell them out. But understand, this is important, and, and that's why I do it. Um, this is another case of a missing person, missing child, 17-year-old, um, Jamaya. For trail, okay. She is 17 years old, right? Missing from Newport News, Virginia. Take a look at this flyer in this picture. Okay, I know they probably posted, you know, on in the you know the live video, but <laughs> TikTok. I'm live now, right now on TikTok at Black Rose Garden Advocacy. Um, um, Zamaya is described as seven, she's 17 years old, black female, right? She has black hair, brown eyes, five foot three and 210 pounds. She was last seen December the 30th, 2022 in Newport News, Virginia. Okay. 
Um, we're on the third of the month right now. So this child has been missing for four days now. So I want y'all to please, this is a missing child alert, active missing child alert. These cases came from the Center for Missing and Exploited Children. So if you have any information on this child's webs about, please, and visit the missing um the Center for Missing and Exploited Children and go keep up to date with the missing persons because they're posted every day. Also, updates are posted as well. Um, like I said, um, Zamaya is missing from the um, Newport News, Virginia area. And if you have any information on her whereabouts, okay? Look at this picture, okay? Look at this picture. Keep it plastic in your mind, all right? If you have any information on her whereabouts, please contact the Newport News Police Department at 757-247-247. 2500, 757-247-2500, okay? If you have any information on the whereabouts of Zamaya, um, Zamaya, let me make sure I got this right, Food Trail, okay? Like I said, I'm also going to be posting these missing persons flyers on my page. I didn't get a chance to get them up there before I went live, but I will be posting them, okay? So stay tuned for them. Also on TikTok as well, okay? Now, the next child um, we have um, reported is also, is too, also coming from the Newport News area, okay? Let me see. Give me a second, y'all. Let me make sure. So I thought I had printed up the flyer of this young girl, but um, I don't have the flyer. But I'm going to speak on this case. Her name is Maya Harris. All right. I'm pretty sure it might be posted on my live video. Um, thank you so much. Monroe Media Television for just keeping it. I'm y'all, it's lit. Okay. We got it going on up in here. But I'm also holding the picture of um, Mia Harris. Mia is described as a black female. She's 16 years of age. Um, she is five foot three and 100 pounds, all right? She's also missing from out of the Newport News, Virginia area. Mia, Mia is dark at the top. Um, she has her hair dark at the top and brown at the bottom, okay? Light brown at the bottom. That's one of the, you know, characteristics right now. Um, her hair is it is dark on the top and it is light brown on the bottom, all right? As you can see in her picture, all right? This was the last picture taken of her. If you have any information on the whereabouts of this baby, Miss Mia Harris, 16 years of age, missing since December the 30th, 2022 please contact the newport news police department now this is a different number okay this is a different number from the one that i put out with um zamaya um case all right this number is 757-928-2500 that's 757 Nine two eight forty five hundred. I mean forty one hundred. All of these cases that I am talking about right now, they are coming from um, the Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Like I said, you can go visit their website at missingkids.org. Okay, for up to date 
information, all right? And just to keep up to date with and helping the family with spreading this information. Um, throughout the show, you're going to be seeing flyers of our missus, you know, coming through, all right? Please share, please share this live video. Um, like I said before, we are now streaming live right now on Facebook at Monroe Media TV, also on YouTube at Monroe Media TV, all right? So please go share and like and subscribe to the Monroe Media TV um, on YouTube, okay, platform on YouTube. Um, last, well, week before last, we kind of got into... Um, sex trafficking education. You're also going to probably see some flyers of just some tips on sex trafficking flying through um, the live video as well. I'm going to be coming up because my job is to keep you all informed and keep you educated in sex trafficking and um, education. We've ended the year um, with quite a bit of incidents reported when it comes to missing as well as sex trafficking incidents, okay? They have skyrocketed this year. Um, ever since the pandemic, for real, um, the cases have, you know, creeped up, all right? So like I said earlier in the show, I'm going to be getting into these schools, I will also um, be coming into the communities, you know, going to the community centers. Um, I'm going to be linking up with a few um, organizations where I'm getting ready to start teaching search and rescue classes, okay? So that's going to be coming all this year. It's just, it's so many different aspects of missing persons that we're basically, we're missing right now. We still need work to work on these aspects, get this information out here, um, and keep you all aware, okay? Um, January the 24th would be, I think it's the anniversary. If I'm, if I have the dates wrong, I'm sorry, but January the 24th is the anniversary of the death of 17-year-old Jalen Jones. His mom will be doing something called a field test, F-E-E-L test. And that's going to be um, the day of the anniversary of his disappearance because he was reported missing January of 2022. Um, he was found um, a couple, about a week later, um, he had been murdered. Um, the trial is getting ready to start this year. Um, I want to send my love and, and hugs to the Jones family, Miss Alexis Jones, Jalen's mom. Um, this is her first year of his birthday is coming up, right? Um, this is the first Christmas that she has had without him. This is the first New Year's that she has had without Jalen. And it's a lot of families who are going through that right now. So just, just keep in mind that we have some families out here that's struggling, right? Do everything that you can to uplift these families, uplift these families and help bring hope you know, to their situations. And doing that is you can simply share the missing person stories. You know, I'm not saying that everybody has to become an advocate, but share, share a missing person story. It does not take nothing but a few seconds to click on to that flyer and hit share. You don't know how much you are helping that family get through that situation. A lot of times when it comes to missing person and black and missing people, our cases, they show minimal to no concern on our cases. That's why it's very important for, you know, platforms like myself. And I encourage anyone who has a podcast or thinking about, you know, advocacy when it comes to missing persons, 
We need all hands on deck, you all. I've always been the type of person when I get my cases, I want to share them. I want to share them to as many people, put them on many platforms as I possibly can because that's what's important. What's important for these families, how we can help these families in the missing and murdered community is just, it's simply a lot of times it's not about money, donating. It's about simply sharing the story, sharing the story, okay? And like I always say, if you see something, say something, you all. Don't just turn a blind eye to the things that go on in your communities. Don't think that what's going on in your community, just because it has not hit your doorstep, that you're an exempt from that happening to because you're not. Understand what happens in one community affects us all. Okay, what happens in one part of the country affects the whole country. It has a trickle down effect. You might not, you know, even really pay attention to it, you know, but it has a trickle down effect when things happen and we just turn a blind eye and we don't say nothing about it. Okay, so I'm getting ready to, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to be back. We're going to talk about the carjacking situation in the DMV area. Y'all going to be really shocked at the stats that we closed out of D.C. this year.
you know, I I've I've really wanted to I set aside time to speak on this issue that is plaguing 32 states, okay, that I have researched, and that's the carjacking situation. Um carjackings last year in the DMV area um risen to I think it was um 47% in the um, District of Columbia in the DMV area. And um, we are having, we had a lot of carjacking deaths this year. Um, coming into the new year, um, I have a friend who had a family member who was carjacked, you know, and that experience, um, we had a young a, a person who was carjacked in Lago a couple of weeks ago, and the the cases are going on and on and on and on. First of all, I want to talk to you about some of the most popular cars that they are noticing that is being stolen. You know, that, you know, being stolen in these 30, it's 32 states right now who is experiencing this uptake with this number when it comes to carjackings. And, um, shoot, they have like the top 15 cars that are popular in, you know, being stolen. Okay. This is something that, these car, I don't know if it's, you know, in some states they're talking about, in some cities they're talking about they're having, they got carjacking rings. They have people who are targeting certain cars. Um, I was looking at some, looking at some documentaries and I was looking at a documentary of a group of people who were car thieves and they were calling themselves the Kia Boys. They were stealing cars, you know, Kia, you know, Kia cars, you know, from all over, you know, the city. And um, I guess it was a high market for those type of cars, but they were being stolen. And the crazy part about it is looking on this list of the top 15 cars that are, you know, most likely, you know, that are being stolen, Kia is in the top 10 of cars that's being stolen. Um, the Audi A6, Chevrolet Equinox, Express, Impala, Malibu, um, Suburban, Tahoe, Chrysler 300s, Town and Country. Okay, the caravans, the car, um, the town and country caravans, Dodge. Okay, um, the caravan, the Charger, the Rango, and the pickup trucks. Now, I was looking at the statistics and when I was pulling up the statistics in a lot of these cities, including here in the DMV area, the pickup trucks were the most popular cars that was being stolen in the city. Yeah, the pickup trucks. It was kind of strange to see that, you know, on the list. You know, I know that the Rangos, and then to see those Hellcats. But then when you think about it, I had talked to a person who, you know, has a history in car theft, and they told me that the Kia's, they get away from the police real fast. They have an engine in them that actually can get away, yeah, from the police real fast. Like, he had a, you know, reason why they, you know, steal the cars and everything, as well as the Hellcats. They were saying that those are fast cars, and they can basically, and the motors in them cost a lot of money, and they are in high demand. You know what I'm saying? So, you all... You know, I know we like what we like and, you know, we should have, be able to have whatever we want if we, you know, work hard for these things. But you have to understand, you have to start watching your surroundings.
I noticed that a lot of these carjackings are happening, you know, they used to happen at the intersection and things where they have some, you know, they have a car trailing you, you know, trailing another car and they jump out and, you know what I'm saying? They take that car and somebody's able to pull off in the car that they was trailing you with. You know, you have to start paying attention to your surroundings, especially when you're at the gas pump. We had a man that was murdered in Merlin, Lago, Merlin last week, who was at the gas station pumping his gas and carjacked and car taken, and they murdered that man, shot that man in cold blood. And don't try to fight these people when they're coming after you for these cars. What's more? important is it that car that you're right that they make frequently or is it your life because you only have one life and it's they can't make that frequently like they can do those cars and eventually that car will be found and if you have insurance you would be able to get a new car you know or something like it you know, so don't try to fight these people or test these people. I was told by a friend of mine, you know, um, whose family member was carjacked. They basically counted one. I'm going to count to three. You know, don't hesitate. Don't think in your mind that you can take off running. Give them people what they ask for because you only have one life. Um, now back on the cars that are, you know, very popular in car jackings and car thefts, the Hyundai, um, Accent, Elantra, Sonata, and, um, Tuscan, Tuscan, okay, um, Jeep Wranglers, Kias, okay, the Kia Optima, Kia Rio, Kia Sedona. Okay, those are very popular cars that, like I said, the guy that was a car thief that I talked to, he said those cars actually get away really fast. They have some strong, powerful motors in those Kias. Okay, and that's why they are the go to car when it comes to car thieves. Okay, we have the Land Rover. Okay. Now, those pretty little fancy, smancy, you know, Range Rovers, the Range Rover, that is a very popular car that's being stolen, all right? Pontiac Grand Prix, Ram pickups, okay, Toyota 4Runner, Forerunners, Highlanders, Rave 4s, okay, Tacoma, all right? The Volkswagen Jetta, Nissan um, Versa, um, I said Pontiac Grand Prix, um, the Mitsubishi Mirage, all right, GMC Yukons, all right, we have the Ford Escape, Explorer, Focus, Fusion, and Taurus. Okay, these are cars that have, they are popular in these 32 states that have seen this rise in carjackings, okay? We have even seen a rise in carjackings, you know, in every form of crime that you can mention, we have seen a rise in, okay? And I'm, I'm centering right now on the DMV area, the District of Columbia, to be exact. We closed the year without, um, out in homicides with over 200 homicides, okay, this past year, 2022. Now, it might not seem like a lot to a lot of you all, but it's a lot, you know, in, in a place where, you know, we have had it's ups and downs when it comes to crime. You know, um, back in the 80s, we had the war on drugs, which during that time, 4,500 people 
lost their lives in that 12 year span that we were dealing with the war on drugs. 4,500 people. Okay. Now you can, it might not seem like a lot, but that's a lot. You know, to know that in the last past, ever since 2015, and these stats are coming from the National Gun Violence Memorial, okay, which has been in existence ever since two, they put their first case up in 2015. And in the DMV, I mean, in, in the District of Columbia, since 2015, there have been over a thousand reported cases of gun violence homicides. OK, and that might not seem like a lot to you, but it really is because it's almost as if it's ranging over 100 homicides a year when it comes to just gun violence alone. I'm not talking about all of the other forms of homicide. I'm just talking about the form of homicide when it comes to gun violence. OK, this year we closed out 2022. We closed out gun violence in this country, over 43,000 victims of gun violence in this country this year. And I just looked at the numbers this morning, you all, and you would be surprised at where we're at nationally. Just in the first three days, we are over 300 individuals who have lost their lives to gun violence just in these three days of 2023. Okay. So a person like myself that research these things, it's like I'm preparing myself right now for what's to come for the rest of the year. If we're starting off like this at 300 and the third day of the new year, and we all have already surpassed 300 individuals who have already either been victims of gun violence or who have lost their lives to gun violence in this country so far. It's going to be horrifying. Okay. And we are going to have to be more involved as voters, as citizens, we gotta we gotta be more involved. You have to do your part in making changes, okay? Being an advocate, I have a lot of cases that are in the court process. You know what I'm saying? Um, they haven't gotten that far yet. And I'm in the process myself of getting legislation put into place. Because when it comes to being an advocate, you know, I've, I've been moved past sharing flyers, okay? And I'm not saying that it's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying that when it comes to missing persons, and the many, many levels of missing persons, there's so many things and so much work that still needs to be done, okay? And so now I'm in the realm of um, getting legislation, working with people who can get legislation passed, okay? I have had the pleasure of speaking with prosecutors, okay? Speaking with um, law enforcement agencies, people from different aspects of law enforcement, just to see what it would take for them to get these cases, you know, brought to trial, convicted, and prosecuted, okay? And the answer was clear, that there is not a lot of laws put into place. Like, for instance, when it's, take the case of Relisha Rudd, okay? When we think about Relisha Rudd, we think about that eight-year-old baby, still missing, okay? Who was reported missing 
in 2014, March the 1st to be exact, people who have been following Relisha's case know that Relisha had ended up in the hands of a man by the name 51-year-old Khalil Tatum. And Khalil Tatum ended up killing his wife and then killing himself without even letting us know what happened to poor Relisha. Nobody still knows what happened to her. And this has been eight years. Going on nine years, we getting ready to come up. March the 1st would be the nine-year anniversary of the disappearance of Relisha Rudd. And we still have no answers. The Wednesday, day before Thanksgiving, I had the pleasure of speaking with the homicide detective that works on Relisha case. And it was heartbreaking to hear that her case might be one of the cases that slipped through the cracks. Her case may be one of the cases that slipped through the cracks. When I heard that, that made me feel some kind of way. And so I have a lot of people reaching out and be like, you know, I don't hear you really talking about religion too much. I don't see you, you know, sharing too many flyers and things of that nature. It's because it is sharing flyers is not doing nothing. That's how I feel. I feel like the only thing that I can do, I might not be able to save her. I think. I might not be able to save her situation, but I would damn sure be able to save the next individual who happens to be in a situation like that. We have children that are being filled miserably all over this country. They're being, being filled miserably. So we're going to have to do our parts and trying to do what we can to help get legislation put into place. Not only that, we have laws out here that's not really being pushed. And I think we need to revisit that situation. As well as, like I said, trying to get with the people who are responsible for pushing these cases like law enforcement, you know, and, um, you know, our prosecutors and things, because like I said, I had the pleasure of, you know, speaking with law enforcement, you know, speaking with prosecutors, you know, because it's almost as if the victims have no rights. It's like the victims have no rights in this situation. Nor does the victim's families. I watch it time and time again where these families are filled miserably. You might get, you know, get to prosecute and convict some of these cases. But in a lot of situations, the missing loved one of the person is not even found or located. And a lot of times when they finish convicting those cases and prosecuting those cases and sentencing those individuals, they totally forget about that missing person. They forget about that family who wants nothing more but to have closure, okay? Because see, closure does not just stop with prosecuting the person behind that you know, that tragedy, okay? Because a lot of times the families want to know why and they don't even get that. A lot, uh, almost all of the time, they never get from the person, you know, who did that God awful thing to their loved one. They never get the reasons why. And it's sad, okay? Like I said, we have a lot of cases that's, in the court processes right now, I will be um, attending the trial of Marty William McMillan Jr., 
okay? That will be in D.C. courts, okay? And that trial starts January the 31st, okay? And I, I am offering my full support to the Cook family and to Marty's mom, who I have been sharing her videos because after these five, yeah, I mean, since 2017, this has really been the first time that she has been able to get out there and even talk about her son's case. Marty's grandmother did a lot of the advocating for his case when it first, you know, happened. But his mom just got to the point where she can even speak on it. And they got a long road to walk when it comes to this trial because the victims don't have no rights, it seems like. They turned that whole scenario into, you know, the victim. You know, they point out all of their, you know, imperfections and things of that nature, you know. And we're going to have to change the face of that. So if you have a family who is going through the court processes right now, they need your help. They need your support. They need just your listening ear, okay? Please support the families, you know, be there. Like I said, I'm going to be there with bills on down in D.C. Superior Court um, January the 31st to represent and support the family of Marty William McMillan Jr., Okay, we getting ready to take a quick break and we're going to be back with the national cheer for the new Black Panther Party.
Y'all, we are back. We are back. We are in the third segment of um, Black Rose Garden Missing and Murder Advocacy Podcast. I'm looking for sponsors, okay? Sponsorship, okay? So if it's anybody out there that is interested in sponsoring a segment, please inbox me or you can... Um, email me at blackrosegardencommunity at gmail.com, okay? Um, like I said, and also donations. We are taking donations. You know, the donations go a long way. We are into the new year, so I do um, flyer distribution. I offer 200 flyers, sometimes 300 flyers to families all over the country, 
who are in need of flyers, you know, for their missing persons, you know, events and things of that nature, because flyers sometimes cost a lot to print up, okay? Especially color flyers. The average color flyer at Staples costs 89 cents, you know, to print up. And if you're printing up two and 300 flyers for an event, that can be a lot and very costly. Um, I print them up, I ship them, you know, to the families to make sure they have them. Also, you know, a lot of law enforcement agencies do not offer missing person flyers, isn't that? I know that sounds a bit unbelievable, but a lot of them do not. One thing that I can say about you know, Washington, D.C. Metropolitan Police Department, they do offer missing person flyers, okay? Um, it's a lot of places that do not, all right? So um, the funds and everything, donations are accepted. You can donate through Cash App to Black Rose 50. In the building, <laughs> I have the National cheer for the new Black Panther Party. And I'm going to let him introduce himself. Uh, well, greetings to you, uh, Sister Black Rose and just Miss Monroe and all of them uh, that are in the network of the studio here. It's a beautiful place, beautiful setting. I am Sheikh Ali Mam Akbar. I am the national chairman of the new Black Panther Party for self-defense. Of course, self-defense is the key to the center's uh, I believe the best offense is to have uh, a dynamic defense. And I think we have been on defense uh, long beyond uh, what I would think would, would be uh, normal circumstances. We have a totally exaggerated set of circumstances, and it causes a, a misinheritance of mm -hmm. socialism uh, that we interpret as, as the Mediterraneanism has dominated uh, much of our culture and have left us in a, in a situation that um, I think is in dire straits. It's, uh, mm. it's a horrible sort of circumstance to tell a captain, as we used to say. But nevertheless, uh, we are the new, new Black Panther Party for self-defense. Uh, we are all over, uh, and we are growing. Um, education is one of our themes, but uh, I think a strong military is, uh, I think we have had business, we've had uh great opportunities in education mm -hmm. and uh, dominated many fields of science. Uh, and if we study the history, uh, as you said, Washington, D.C. is uh, Banneker, that belongs to Banneker because that's his layout, that's mm -hmm. from, from his memory. And he made the clock, he had genius, he tapped into the genius potential. And I never voted to put up Ronald Reagan's airport, but we have Banneker Town and I go to Banneker Field and there's very little else that we can identify to represent our founding father. Mm -hmm. So I placed that on the strength of the Honorable Marion Barry, who turned the whole picture around, and we can go forward from there right. in Washington and for the Black Panther as well. New has been put in, in front of the Black Panther Party now. Um, I was born in the 70s. I remember the Black Panther Party, um, Huey and you know, all of the rest. What, is there a, a similarity to the new and the old Black Panther or is it a new something new, a new well, way of doing things? We uh, uphold all of the uh, principles of the 10-point platform mm -hmm. of the original Black Panther Party. We hold the uh, nine local objectives uh, of the original party. And we have now the five duties of a local panther. And what we do is uh, take a position that uh, black people should all be gainfully employed. We uh, should all have decent housing and uh, we should have a, a, a way to make a respectable living. And then when people say that the Black Panther or the new Black Panther Party has pulled the race card, now we're just dealing with whatever back to them, whatever was in the deck. We're playing the card in the deck. We've never been the dealer. So therefore, um, we're not out of bounds because they introduced the concept of no holes barred. Exactly, yeah. Precisely. Mm -hmm. So the new Black Panther Party is a non-compromising 
and we uh, don't compromise with the opposition. Okay, meaning? Well, uh, the original party, they had some, some footprints in the sand. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, say Patty Hearst would, would go find a white woman and stick up a, a bank. Mm-hmm. Well, the, a new Black Panther Party is non-compromised. We won't be on your record as a, a new Black Panther Party. We are uncompromisingly Black, and we won't be sticking up a bank for white women. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the members of the original party would say that, well, I'm, I'm frustrated with the white man. I'm frustrated with the pig and mm-hmm. all of these various things that we had complained about as original Panthers. Mm-hmm. And I'm saying to you that, uh, no, we won't be fu- ventilating our frustration on the white woman. We won't be dating Miss White or Miss Lily or mm-hmm. Autumn or Megan or, mm-hmm. or Little Peggy. Or we, we, you, you won't find us in the situation <laughs> right. with Miss White. So the white man can mm-hmm. take down his guard. When he see new in front of the Panther Party, he may, everything else may be in danger, but his woman will not be one of them. Anymore. Right. I think that's the distinction of the new Black Panther Party. We are non-compromising on the principle of mm-hmm. being uncompromisingly Black. Right. Yes, ma'am. Right. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. I don't see anything wrong with that. People have always got it misconstrued True. and, you know, misinformed when it comes to... You know, even when it comes to Malcolm X and the Nation of Islam, you know, people always looked at it as racism. But I looked at Malcolm as him just wanting us to love us as a black race. I can I can simply say that I wasn't a fan of segregation. Okay, because I felt like we needed to be with our own people to love each other and work on our own selves. Had that been just like every a lot of the different nationalities and things are segregated, they're for their own people. We seem to be the only race that we're for everybody except for our own. Mm-hmm. You know, even when it comes to a sense of when you look at this crime right now. People don't want to mention it, but we're dealing with black on black crime right now. We closed the year out of 2022 with over 43,000 deaths involving gun violence in this country. Okay. And majority of those deaths were people of color. Okay. Think about it. Well, when we um, examine the, uh, the early relationship with the opposition, uh, we um, came out of it uh, with a mindset that uh, the uh, blame was always put on on the slave. If the if master uh, the horse didn't plow the field and the mule wouldn't go up the hill, then he blame it on the slave and start whipping the slave. Mm-hmm. And so we have uh, adopted a habitation of blaming the victim. And we uh, tend to want to go in the direction of Malcolm to say to it's not knowledge until you can use it uh, skillfully and effectively against the opposition. And um, Malcolm said that we should be in charge of the health and medicine. We should be in charge of the politics in our own community, the socialism, Mm -hmm. the education in our own community. Maybe then uh, we'll have a form of nationalism, a recognizable, respectable nationalism. And as of now, the new Black Panther Party is going in the direction of self-government. And uh, some of us are organic farmers and taking on the land. And uh, we've challenged, for instance, the state of South Carolina to to take the land and the state. Mm -hmm. We've uh, challenged some of that in Delaware as well to get land and state. And we have acquired uh, the, the land acquisition clause, meaning as a Black Panther and with my military experience, Anything within a mile circumference, not mile radius, a mile circumference of my uh, land acquisition, meaning where I lo- own land at five miles within, say, my five acres a year, within a one mile radius, anyone that is doing any harm uh, to black people in particular, I, I can I can use uh, my uh, power of uh, jurisdiction. I have jurisdiction mm-hmm. within a mile radius of my home. And I will go to these county board meetings, go to the city council meeting, 
and get them approved, get get it signed off. Mm-hmm. They say, oh, we welcome them. Is Panther coming? We right. welcome them. Say, we need help with these things. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need all the help we can get. These are just quotes from various mayors and uh, heads of city councils, uh, the head, the digging of the county board, and all of those people welcome the, the thrust, the uh, input from the Panther. They, they, because most of them are learned people. And learn people know that the U.S. government will work in our breakfast program, mm-hmm. our WIC program, and put it in the name of the government. And as you now know about, the, I think, the scarcity of the, the red heifer, and they are, uh, are, are doing things, that the alphabet soup boys, the, the FBI, the CIA, all the alphabets are, are trying to do the, the gay, some call him J. Edgar Hoover, some of my network call him gay Edgar Hoover, but he wanted to stop the rise of the black Messiah. Now they say th- this is the turn. This year, the 23 brings the, the new black Messiah, is, as they say, has been born. Mm-hmm. They didn't give the date of his birth, but they say he has been born and he'll rise in 23. That's the prediction of many of those who, who have written and prophesied. Malcolm X, I thought, was the greatest thing that could have ever happened. But much of that, see, is from the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And most of us are probably not willing to take any instructions from the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Mm-hmm. As did my leader, the honorable Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad, took that discipline from the honorable Elijah Muhammad, took the discipline from Malcolm X and from the honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan. And it, it produced a good thing in their life. So no sane person will abandon something that they know just made them successful. Mm-hmm. So with the success of the Honorable Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad, we brought in the discipline. And then uh, much of, of that platform is taken from, from Malcolm X. And Malcolm X took it from the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. All that Mosque 1 and Mosque 2 is the things that Malcolm came with later was uh, directly out of uh, a chapter of Islam or a chapter from the nation of Islam. And uh, many of the... Uh, Black Panthers, many black activists today uh, are at odds with the Nation of Islam. I have a very user-friendly relationship with the Nation of Islam and all of the Panthers they know that are under uh, and, and connected and networked into, into my leadership have, have very good working relations uh, mm-hmm. with the Nation of Islam at this hour. So we don't uh, see anything uh, wrong with, with different groups, organizations. Now, we built uh, from an organization, we built it into an institution. I grew up in the Nation of Islam. We went from an organization to an institution, and we began to trade import and export, but we traded right. as as a, as a nation mm-hmm. and not as an organization. Right. So those distinct differences, and I've inherited much of that and given it to the Panthers today, and, that, and that's why you see it as a very popular, becoming more like a household word with uh, two great episodes that have been put, put out of the Panther and uh, Mm-hmm. I don't have any problems with anything like that. Yeah, uh, a lot of people took war with that, but they probably had war with themselves as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> to see, you know, first of all, I want to ask, what does Black Lives Matter mean to a person I, like yourself? Well, I just say it like Malcolm would say: uh, we've we've been hijacked, we've been hoodwinked, and we've been bamboozled. Uh, they took it for a profit. The work of the Black Panther, everything you see uh, surrounding these Black Lives Matter, most of that, a great percentage of it, is leaning right on the Panther work. And they it was a convenience. They use it as a convenience to make money. And many times we're not really helping the victim. In fact, a lot they of are times. to blame the victim. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, and therefore it has a very bad reputation with the people that are connected at the top it's always a money scheme. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's one thing the Panther has been uh, very uh, brilliant in not being uh, uh, known for uh, hustling you for money. And uh, we don't get a dime from the U.S. government, from U.S. corporations, and from not even foreign uh, investors. Every dime that comes into the New Black Panther Party comes from we, the people. And uh, we're located where we get most of that money. Is it okay to say that? Mm-hmm. We're at dollar sign 77 Bakers. I, I don't know if they can print it on the screen, but uh, dollar sign 77 Bakers. Uh, with our troops going all over the country, with our troops, when Howard University went into uh, 
the mold and mildew syndrome in the dormitories yeah. of the freshmen. I was there with you food. There. Mm -hmm. And you yeah. saw us feeding every day. We had mm -hmm. hot food. Uh, we, we brought in sleeping bags for the mm -hmm. students. Lots of sleeping bags, not one or two. Mm -hmm. We pitched tents, maybe about 15 tents out there, and just left them with the students. And we bought water, food, and, and organic, and a hot meal. And our beloved sister, uh, chair of the city at that time, and uh, head of the current community uh, program, Sister Janae, was doing a wonderful job in, in the liaison and bringing it together. Uh, my imam, Imam Abdul Ali, Mm -hmm. Right here in Washington, D.C., the imam of the Russia Doom Masjid and Masjid Russia Dean and Russia Doom uh, is there uh, to make a whole life. It brings a holistic flavor. Means that, and you're the same as we are, Sister uh, Black Rose. We're not feeding the homeless. We're feeding people that are hungry or just want a meal. Mm -hmm. We're free, we, the people, should be accustomed. It's in, in our tradition. It's in our uh, folklore. It's, it's in our uh, genetic. To feed each other and to, and to welcome you with a meal, to yeah. set you down and mm -hmm. present you with something. That's why I have been moving strong with um, Black Rose Garden advocacy, you know, food distribution every Sunday. I'm thankful for mm -hmm. the people who have partnership with me to give me a whole truckload of food mm -hmm. to get out to the community, you know, um, to my seniors. I try to target the most vulnerable you know, because like I said, I'm I'm in the trenches on the daily, okay? And so I understand what my people need. And if I can't give it to them, I'm damn sure going to make sure that they get it, you know? And so that's why, you know, my platform is so important. I'm a missing and murder advocate, sir, and... When I deal with a lot of the families straight off, I'm in the trenches. I see what's going on. When you as a Black Panther looking at your community, you know, we just closed out in D.C. We just closed the year out with over 200 homicides yes, in D.C. A lot of them were gun related homicides, mass shootings. Um, a lot of them were homicides against our black males, our youth. You know, we had a high percentage of youth and young people and people from the ages of zero to 12 who lost their lives last year. Teenagers, over 2,000 teenagers lost their lives to gun violence and had been injured. What is your plans as a Black Panther to try to combat these situations in our community. Because I know a lot of times when it comes to organizations like yours, National Action Network, um, NAACP, I have been a committee chair for the National Action Network, okay? I have been on the membership, been a member of the NAACP and a lot of organizations. What made me step down from those organizations is because they're centered on one thing, okay? And that's the harm that we receive as people from our police departments and things of that nature. But when you flip it on the other side, you see us doing more harm to us than anything, and when you look at those numbers, when it comes to police-involved shootings and killings and things of that nature, nature, white people are has a very high percentage of police shootings and things of that nature. We put a lot of emphasis on us because the population in black people now we're a little like twelve percent of when it comes to the world population and we're leaving every single day. We're not having babies no more like we used to. You know, a lot of the situations is because, you know, the hospitals are not equipped here in the DMV or, well, in the district to even house, you know, and, and deliver babies. Um, another thing is that, like I said, we just, totally forget about we we are sick when it comes to black people we are suffering right now and 
being an advocate, I see these problems year in, year out. You know, I started my show talking about the numbers. Yes, oh, because because it bothers me. It bothers me that nobody looks at the end of these families, these mothers, these fathers, these grandparents, these aunties and uncles and sisters and brothers who have lost these loved ones with nobody standing behind them. But yet we have all of these organizations centered on one thing except for, I call it black togetherness. Because we don't, we don't pay attention to that. We don't pay attention to the black togetherness situation. We don't. We don't pay attention to that at all. It's like we have totally forgot the black togetherness. Everybody want to talk about everything else except for the issues that we have. What is the plans of the new Black Panther Party to combat or to start to pay attention to some of that stuff? Because whether it's happening in your community or not, it's happening in every community. Well, and it affects you. What are the plans? Absolutely. Uh, we, uh, uh, first of all, the uh, experience I bring to the table, um, I was the uh, field manager for uh, the Epscondus unit mm -hmm. in the Washington metropolitan area. And many people that are from here are familiar with the concept of abscondus. Uh, it literally means to run away or to leave. Mm -hmm. And some have left mentally and, and spiritually uh, anywhere from two weeks to uh, two years in the planning when a young person runs away from uh, a certain amount of responsibility. It could be as lightweight as, as doing the dishes or, or taking out the trash. Mm -hmm. They just uh, have an... Uh, uh, they're obstinate and rebellious against taking authority from um, from anyone who has authority, mm -hmm. and um, and we have been able to combat that by going directly and and meeting uh, the black youth where they are. The most honorable Dr. Khalid Abdul, Abdul Muhammad teaches us that the black youth have God, the Almighty God of the worlds, the mm -hmm. one who originated the heavens and the earth is on the side of the black youth. Uh, many times they will blame the black youth, uh, whether they are responsible or not. And they have taken issue with that by rejecting most of what's being presented to them. By anyone over 30, you might be in trouble out here. Unless, again, you have an inside track or a way of communicating with them that's acceptable. And uh, one way I've been able to combat that, I do a lot of uh, security and some of the security I do for the, for the rap community. And, um, and people don't realize that before they go bad mouth in the rapper, he might be just telling a story his way. Uh, and, uh, he may not like it, but he's a boss. He, he, he has an accountant, a bookkeeper. He has a chef, a hairdresser, all on his staff. And many times they all travel with the rapper. And so we've got to secure all these people. And you get to communicate with them to find out the, the latest and lingo. And they also have a music them. industry. Mm -hmm. I mean, a music produ product they under a network that is making trillions off of their fucking mm -hmm. ignorance. Mm -hmm. Okay? About them singing, about killing each other and sliding and riding and gliding mm -hmm. all over the place. And these are the people that our children have to look up to. You think I want my grandson singing the songs of a fucking King Vaughn, sir? Hell no, I don't. Do you think I want him to even know who the hell he is? No, I do not want him to know who he is because see, when I was coming up in hip hop and all of that stuff, I can't, I'm, I'm coming up off a person like Tupac. OK, when you look at Tupac and you look at King Vons and all of the Chief Keeps and all of the other people, you know, that's out here with this trap music and this dr drill music, it's a damn difference. OK, T Tupac talked about the revolution. He talked, taught us things in those lyrics. Now, these young boys are singing about their heart, their pain and everything. But what do you think that that looks like at a young child looking at that? Well, see, uh, people say it starts in the home, but 
many of these youngsters that have no home, uh, they, uh, uh, mother and father have been victims of the system that may be on a drug program. They may be in the penitentiary or both mm-hmm. and both parents. Been, and the child maybe end up in the foster care circumstances. They'll burn out birth, both aunts on both sides of the family. And auntie get tired. They send them to grandma and them. Both grandparents, you come and mention their name at the door and they're going to slam the door in your face. And that's right now. So how are we able to combat this? By breaking the ice that you have with any young person, about 10 seconds to make a friend or an enemy. We are the friend of four. You didn't know. And they say that's why they had him strung out on death row. And death and destruction, a life uh, has less meaning when uh, you feel that you have nothing or very little to live for. But again, as Malcolm said, once you are reminded that you were once the king and you were an educator in uh, the chemist society, Dr. Collie teaches her, uh, by the time you get to MOTEP, you were working medicine, you were working you some science, mathematics. Uh, the Honorable Lonnie Shabazz, one of my teachers, an uh, uh, excellent mathematician, and, mm-hmm. and resulted, uh, Imam Worf Dean Muhammad told me that if I listened to him, if I were to obey him, that my children would be genius. And uh, my son has just graduated from Texas Southern University as magna cum laude in this direction of uh, communications, television, radio, et cetera. He wrote two books while going to school uh, with uh, uh, Les Brown one and the other, uh, Indigo Academy, The Rise of Anarchy, was written in animation. And that was because of Kobe Bryant's input. He played junior Laker ball in Los Angeles and became number one in the academics and number one in the athletics as, as well. And he became well-rounded because he obeyed the coach. Most of the time I was a coach, but by the time he got to his real coach, he was already in the groove mm-hmm. of taking some orders from somebody that had some sense. Uh, a lot of times what young people do, it, it makes no sense. And t- sometimes I got to shake them and break them a little bit because that's what the prescription calls for. And the police are afraid of our youngsters. Because if they say the wrong syllable or make the wrong move or touch it wrongly, then they're going to be liable as, as law. They will sue the city, the police department, and the individual officer if you do something wrong towards a youth in the District of Columbia, especially. Because in your hometown, those listening to the broadcast, you have from 12 to 18. Mm-hmm. But in the District of Columbia, as you know, Black Rose, it is 12 to 21. So the dynamic changes, the age differences uh, changes when it comes to dealing with the District of Columbia. I get tired of hearing DMV. I don't know what that means. Mm-hmm. If the District of Columbia is not a state, why they keep saying it? I have no idea. Yeah. I use Delaware, uh, Maryland, and Virginia. I don't use it. The district is, is just a piece of work. Mm-hmm. You are work in progress. The jury is still out on Washington, D.C., the district of if Columbia. it ever becomes a state, because oh like God. with the leadership that I see it having now, is a long time coming. Absolutely. That would never happen. But um, we are we getting a little close to time to clear out because we started this um interview a little late. But yeah. um, I want to have you back because it's still some things I want to reach. My slogan is, sir. Black Lives Matter starts in your fucking black home. Go ahead. Okay? That's my thing. It starts in... I, I'm more of moving away from the finger pointing, right? Because, see, I'm not a person that has shackles on my feet, on my arms, or on my brain. I don't have it because, see, a lot of us is still enslaved up here. That's right. And my thing is having you here is because I want to I want us to collaborate on how we can make our people better. And it's not about continuing to live a lie. Okay. It's about speaking the truth. It's about teaching our people who we are as real people, getting that information out there. Because I'm tired of my grandbabies. I have grandbabies. I'm 52 years old. I have grandchildren. My youngest child would be 30 years old. My oldest is 35. 
Okay. And I have grandchildren coming to me right now with, you know, talking about, you know, writing up black history reports on shit that I talked about when I, you know, wrote my black history report up when I was in school. Because of the simple fact we don't teach our children nothing. We don't teach them. We teach them about slavery and how we were hung from trees and this, that, and the third. But we don't teach them the positive side of it. Why white people didn't want us to read? Why they didn't? Why they burnt our churches? Who was these people creating these great dishes and things that we use in everyday life, even as today? See, we don't talk about those things. And I think that if we move more towards educating our youth on who we really, really are, we will see some changes. Because if you have youth or you have people who are constantly being told we have been slaves, we have been whipped, we have been did this to and that to, we're going to live with that. We're going to carry that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking forward to collaborating Absolutely. and us getting, hopefully you can come back next week hopefully. and yeah. we can get really deep into this because this was a conversation that needs to be had. That's true. Absolutely. You true. know? So I'd like to leave you with um, something I worked on for a while and I call it EIDS. Mm -hmm. And this is early uh, instant death syndrome. Are we disproportionately affected by this early instant death syndrome when it comes to uh, situations uh, as takeoff or uh, Twitch, mm -hmm. uh, which was a, a, a DJ for Ellen DeGeneres? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, takeoff is a, one of the amigos, one of the many amigos that we have. And I have the opportunity to travel with them as well. And uh, you'd just be surprised. Uh, but my bottom line is uh, what Kanye West is saying, that um, we should take issue with these things while to strike while the iron is hot. They might not like him, may not like his tunes, may not like what he's saying. Mm -hmm. But one thing, he got us talking about the right subject at this hour. Uh, yeah. That is to remove the bloodsuckers from our entertainment community. But when we look at uh, Takeoff, when we look at Tupac Biggie, when we look at Michael Jackson Prince, are we in a uh, syndrome of early instant death syndrome. Uh, the royalties for James Brown is being squabbled over by the opposition, namely mm -hmm. a white woman, um, uh, of James Brown's royalties. Uh, where did Barry White's royalties go? Mm -hmm. What is the real circumstances surrounding Sammy Davis Jr.? And what is going on with uh, the thing that we know Isaac Hayes to do, the, the kind of music we know that he put out and then we look at and, and reverse the polarity to Desi Arnaz or Lucy, uh, Lucille Ball. Or if you look at Patrick Swayze and Dean Martin and Frank Sinatra, and it seems to me all of those people I named that were white people are counting money from the graveside and, and their uh, siblings are doing well. No danger of, of eating up the royalties, no tax evaders among them, but always it's the same cry. Oh, Joe Jackson, you can't touch any of Michael's money. Or uh, you look at the James Brown's children fighting with these folks over the money. That Sammy Davis's widow say, "Well, where is mm -hmm. the money? Will I have to go on stamps and all of these questions?" Uh, so we want to look at and explore that. Does does uh, this disproportionately affect us when it comes to our entertainers, our sports figures? And we look down the line and see our political figures, such as uh, uh, in Houston, they had a man named Mickey Leland went down in the airplane. We had a man named Otis Redding, a, a singer, went down in the airplane. Mm -hmm. We had a man named Ron Brown, I mean, the most dynamic political leader in this century, in my opinion. Uh, he saved all the Democratic Party, saved Slick Willie, uh, uh, Bill Clinton, and all them. And they appointed him as a Commerce Secretary when he was well on to be a Secretary of State, well on to be a president because he was so dynamic mm -hmm. and he was so skillful and so effective. But Ron Brown goes down in an airplane and um, and 34 business people go down with him to get our one. Yeah, that's something but, that needs to be considered and we need to think about. And we're going to have that discussion next week. Um, thank y'all for tuning in 
to another Thank segment you. of Black Rose God and Missing and Murder Advocacy Podcast. Next week, we will have special guests, um, District 6 Council Chair, um, Miss Walla Blue Gay will be in the building next week. And also, Mr. Arbach will be here next we'll be week. Here. Love y'all. Happy love, New Year's Happy. to y'all again. Please continue to share the stories of our missing. If you would like to donate, I am looking for sponsorship. Okay. Um, you can email me at Black Rose Garden community at gmail.com. Um, we are accepted donations. You can donate through Cash App at Black Rose 50. Okay. Love y'all. See y'all next week. Power to we the people.